guys, it's Danielle here. Thanks again so much for tuning into this video and watching me turn this butter blonde wig, this blonde 613, into a winter 18 fluorescent neon sensation. I'm so inspired by the fluoro trends. We're about to turn this wig into something really special. So watch me cook it up. Waiting for the car to get hot. Oh, it, it's hot. <laughs> it's definitely hot. You don't want the water too hot. That's the one thing I've learned. That's, yeah, so three liters of water. That's our colors, guys. Crazy colors. Toxic UV. Okay, so now we're going to start to add our direct dyes to our water. Remember this water is still hot to warm. You don't want it too hot and you also don't want it to start cooling down to get towards room temperature. So be sure that you are going ahead and getting each and every little bit of the color that you paid for. Um, you know, maximize each drop of pigment into that water you'll find that you're going to need it especially based on the length of the hair and how much hair you are doing so today we're doing a full wig so we need every little drop of that pigment and then you go on to mixing and as you can see you want to be very thorough when you're mixing as you mix you're gonna see how you like the color and you're gonna adjust based on what you see and what you want as your result. So here I'm going in and I'm adding a little fluorescent yellow. So I'm using a different brand um, just to offset this neon green, going in and adding that fluorescent yellow to really make this pop and really make it neon and going right back in. And here's a shot of what the mixture is looking like. So this is how the color dissolves into the water and you can see that it's not exactly what I wanted so I'm going back in as you should while you're doing this process and mixing and just tailor that color to be exactly what you want and exactly how you want your hair to look and now we're ready to dip in so you can see me testing out the ends but be careful when you're doing your color. Whatever part of your hair that you dip into the water first is what's going to absorb the most pigment and therefore be the darkest and most intense part of your hair. So I like to go in with the roots end first. I kind of just like that natural look that hair would normally have, a little darker at the roots and lighter at the ends. So I don't like that unrealistic look, even though I'm saying unrealistic, but we're using this bright green fluorescent um, color, but I still like the look of the roots being darker than the ends, as opposed to a lot of these neon looks and wigs have all that pigment at the ends and then the roots look like blown out to me. I, I just don't like that look in a lot of these fashion wigs I'm seeing lately. So that's how I correct it. I start by going to the roots and later on in the video, you're even going to see me go in with a little more pigment on the roots just to really um, just saturate those roots and really reemphasize natural gradation. So here's a little look at the process clearly this color has taken um now we just need to go in and check and see if it's even but looking good this is one of the best um takes of the watercolor that i've had so far water has turned like not clear but just milky so so much of that green has been absorbed all in the hair such a cool process so i just want you guys to take a look at the water now that everything's said and done hold on let me find that whisk so you remember what the water looked like when i originally made this color batch so this is what happens after all that color is absorbed 
by the hair. It totally takes the color out of the water. All we get is like this milkiness left, which is probably, you know, whatever conditioning base is used in this color. So that's what happened to the water. Okay guys, so now I'm going in with that last half bottle. Um, actually, I should probably pour a little bit of this water out. And I'm going to add the last half of that third bottle of color. I'm going to mix it up and I'm just going to make a batch just specifically for those roots. So here's the wig that I'm going back in just for these hot roots, just to darken them. So I'm just going to tip those in there. So I just brushed it out a little. Now I'm going to, I guess I'm going to go off like a center part. So like I said here, I'm just going in to correct the hot roots. I'm just parting it where I know I'm most likely going to be parting this wig for style. I'm tipping it in there and letting these roots sit just for a few minutes just to make sure most of the saturation and um, darkness is coming from the root. I'm just letting it set in there for a few minutes, just making sure not to tint the lace too much, but get those roots saturated. So now it's definitely a little bit better. Um, I don't want to go overboard and I can see that a lot of that color was already absorbed. So just going to leave it like that. Just not, not rinse this time. So it's just darker right up here and in through here. I just like to mimic where things would be darker if I was doing a blonde basically. So I just want to take a quick minute with you guys and just remind you of the importance of cleanup. One thing with water-based colors is they're very easy to clean. So before you move on too far, just stop and go ahead and clean up the color before it has a chance to soak into anything so you're not scrubbing. It makes life a lot easier to just go ahead and get it done before you get too far in the process of your wig. I know I can get caught up so easily, so just take a minute, stop, wipe it down. Water-based colors come out so easy and then you're done. Here she is guys, we're just shaking the wig out of the towel. I let it sit in the towel just for a few minutes and now I'm going to get it on my mannequin head. <laughs> Check her out, don't ask too many questions on that one. Um, so I'm getting her on this head right here, just tucking her in behind those ears so I have a nice stable, steady base to brush her out. Um, I think I'm prepping her for air dry in this so I'm really just getting the hair detangled and setting it into the part that I know I'm going to want to style off of and then I'm going to go ahead and let this air dry before I cut to. <laughs> Here she is. Um, this She has been air dried, blown out roughly and cut into our shape. So now you're going to just um, watch me go ahead and style this and i wanted to make sure i did a really modern style when you have a color like this i don't think we need anything too classic even though we see um somebody like cardi b she's always rocking these crazy colors and like super classic almost like 50s um really feminine styles <laughs> But anyway, I'm going in with some really modern waves. I want to, you know, make sure you can really see that color, see that movement, see that dimension. One thing about watercolor is you get so much beautiful dimension and you didn't ha even have to do the work. You know what I mean? Like it's really just based off of how well you lifted your color or the quality of the blonde that you use, the quality of that 613, and you really get to enjoy a lot of dimension when you do watercolor, and you make sure that you saturate everything all the way throughout your wig. So like I said, here I'm just going in, these are like my classic waves. Um, I just love that loose wave into those straight ends. This is kind of like kind of like my signature style um, when I'm showing off new color or new highlights. So this is it. Um, I, I love it, you guys. Like, let's lock that style in there. I love this wig. I love it with 
this wave. I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I'm telling you guys, this is my best watercolor um, final product yet. I'm living for it. I cannot wait for somebody to rock this. Yay, she's so great. So thanks so much for watching this process. I hope you enjoyed this transformation and come back next time for another video. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Love you so much. Bye.